Hello, welcome to Vibe Osmosis. How are you? I'm pretty good. What about yourself? It's been a nice one. At least it's not like really, really hot and sweaty out today. I mean, uh, enjoying that weather. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, so my name is Ashley Steelman, uh, otherwise known as A Rose. Um, and I'm an artist. And how long have you uh, been creating, drawing, painting, um, sculpting, and all that stuff? Um, pretty much my whole life. I think I knew that I wanted to be an artist since I was really little. Um, and that's pretty much the only thing I ever wanted to be other than um, a diver for the Titanic. Uh, why, why a diver? Um, I love the ocean and I was a swimmer for like 12 years, um, for USA swimming. So, uh, and I love treasure hunting. So just diving the shipwreck sounds pretty cool. So swimming kind of came hand in hand with the art realm, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely taught me a lot of discipline in my practice and it definitely influences some of the, um, works that I create. And uh, one of my favorite all-time questions with uh, this with this show in particular, and of course meeting new people, astrological sign, and do you believe in the astrology uh, what's written among the stars? Um, I do. I do believe in that uh, for the most part. Um, I'm not. I don't really go like too in depth with it necessarily, but I am a Leo. Um, and most of the aspects of Leo definitely stands true to me. So, so yeah. Early Leo, or are you talking late August or so? Early August. My birthday is August 4th. I guess it's kind of an early birthday realm, even though I guess we're not too summer yet. And I feel like that's... Uh, my sister is also Leo, and every time mm -hmm. that we uh, go on vacation, it feels like it's in August right on her birthday. So it's just kind of like uh, maybe best of both worlds on her part of enjoying, I guess, the the midsummer part or before it gets back to the uh, the winter and the fall time and all that. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm definitely a summer baby. <laughs> um, also, I... Uh, I've noticed in your artwork that you use various mediums throughout your time. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of expand on what got you interested in trying to use more than just like, I want to be really good at just water painting or, or so on. Um, I come from, so my great grandmother was an artist and she um, used to teach classes um, in the Depression era uh, called Something from Nothing. Um, so I guess I kind of got, and I, and I also come from a family of engineers. So I was always kind of like building things from just anything that I could find. Amazon, and, and, um, I didn't really grow up with too much money and I don't really have much now. So I kind of just use whatever I can get my hands on to create something. So I don't really let you know, not having tons of money to buy specific supplies to hold me back. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I feel like it kind of goes from different uh, cities to cities. Like I lived out in Seattle for a little bit and some of the people that I met that were like, you know, working out of their like apartment while they're still going to like Cornish or something. It's still mm -hmm. kind of be about like reusing materials and finding materials to work on. And especially mm -hmm. if like, I don't know, maybe the the college wasn't providing like everything per se. Mm -hmm. um, did you kind of like get in the, I don't know, in the habit of like looking for stuff to um, start painting on or start to add to other, other things? Because I know you have like... Uh, even like 3D element art. Yeah, I'm definitely a collector of things and I'm drawn to um, specific things in particular. So I just have like vast collections of these specific things um, like mesh bags and kumquats for a while. And um, I'm like definitely a dumpster diver when it comes to um, like wood materials and stuff. Like I've never purchased wood before. Um, 
but luckily I, I have a studio and, and it's in a building full of other people and there's some carpenters here and they just kind of like set out stacks of wood places. And, um, so I just, I don't know. I, I like, I really like, um, kind of having the challenge of using what I have, um, and working with those materials to create something, because if it's just kind of, you know, a canvas right there, you know, it's a little, I don't know, sometimes it can be a little bland for me. So I like using um, all kinds of stuff to just mix and match things together. All right. And uh, I'd like to also bring up the graphite on paper. Um, Kind of expand on, you know, what inspired you to start using graphite and doing like um, a little bit more um, kind of, I would say like, what like some sort of representation um and also like this obscure um element that you put in with these graphite um drawings that you do yeah so i i really like um you know taking materials and stuff with me wherever i go uh and so having just like you know small sheets of paper and i just i keep a a little bag of all kinds of you know, pencils and graphite and all kinds of stuff in my backpack. Um, so it's just like a nice thing to have on hand. Um, so I can make work wherever I go really. Um, but the subject matter for those is kind of, um, derived from my love for like, uh, circus folk, (laughs) um, or just like, uh, I really love, painting people and uh, drawing people. Um, So it's kind of fun to incorporate that um, in kind of like a contortionist way. Um, And I definitely like pull images and things from uh, my studio, like a cuckoo clock or um, I love drinking root beer and that's in one of my drawings too. So it's just like random stuff that kind of, it's kind of intuitive really. Yeah, and, like, with the root beer connoisseur, how did that kind <laughs> of, like, get into the mix as far as, like, yeah, like, I, I feel comfortable sharing this one, and, like, this is kind of, like, you know, um, a, a kind of, like, a theme that you that you tie in with some of your artwork as well? Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of just stuff that, like, makes me giggle, <laughs> honestly. I always... Um, I'm sure my friends probably get annoyed with it, but I always jinx people and tell them that they owe me a root beer. (laughs) Um, so I don't know. I just kind of incorporate things that make me laugh and, um, or like, you know, kind of subliminal things that I don't really even notice that I, um, incorporate in my work too. Uh, I guess, um, to also bring up, um, one of the other things that I've really, uh, st- I feel like, related to is uh, some of this weirder um, oil, um, these like oil paintings that you do on like different kinds of material. I know you did the mango juice mm-hmm. blessings that was on um, the yeah. newspaper. Um, so mm-hmm. like kind of um, branch into like what inspired you to start working with oil painting and um also like what kind of ideas like you had maybe going in working with oil or if you just kind of like built it up as as you went um i definitely like pull a lot of stuff from experiences that i have um and kind of just let my imagination ride with that and i don't really like plan everything out Um, I kind of just have one thing that like, I take a lot of my own photos for my work, um, or like do some research, research on things that like, I really enjoy. Like for instance, those, um, they're actually oil pastels. I do do a lot of oil paintings as well, but those drawings in particular, um, I actually had traveled to India, uh, for my second time for my friend's engagement ceremony. And I was there for a month and I wanted to be able to make work while I was there. So I kind of just, those are, those drawings are on, um, like Indian newspaper. Um, and 
it was just uh, an easy material to bring with me, like I said before, just being able to bring stuff with me places. Um, and we had gone to uh, various museums and um, like a bird sanctuary while we were there. Uh, so I kind of just pull from these different experiences to um, come up with my ideas. I I uh, I really I really do enjoy traveling myself. I I interviewed this band um Suburbia last night that's based in Brazil and they uh-huh. did have like later on plans on coming to America again to like do like a whole tour next year. Um but I've uh-huh. always like, you know, always asked like my people that I interview internationally like your point of view on the United States, would you want to move here or like what are the things that like make you want to come here and play shows whenever mm-hmm. um I don't know, I guess there's always like that um fantasy um about the American dream. Did you ever have mm-hmm. like your own like m- like time traveling where you're like I could probably not go back to the states or you enjoy it? Um I really, I mean, I really, I do enjoy being here just because, you know, my family's here and everything. Um, And the cultural differences of being in other places, like India, for instance, um, it can be a little tricky to navigate uh, as a female. Um, So I don't think I would want to stay there. Um, But I, I do love it as a place that I can go and visit and spend time with my friends and their family and um, just experience kind of like a special thing. Um, I've just built such a world here for myself. Um, and it's even hard to leave Ohio really. Um, cause I just, I have such a supportive family here and a studio and, you know, it's really affordable where I am. So, uh, I don't know. I would like to go elsewhere eventually, but we'll see. I, I like think, you know, particularly, you know, down in South America per se, Argentina, um, mm-hmm. Panama, Arge- um, and like Buenos Aires is like out there. Um, I, w- I was just thinking like, yeah, there's aspects that's so nice to like, you know, be stripped away from like maybe the simple comforts that you get out here, but you're having to also mm-hmm. play like their own corporate game as far as like their corruption mm-hmm. um if you're walking out late or having weird curfews and you know getting stopped by police and having to pay off people if you or right. if you're really in that case or if you don't have money then you're getting shot so there's just some aspects mm-hmm. i guess where you're getting the both of best of both worlds whenever you're visiting paradise um especially right. uh, um i feel like with you know bahamas because you're getting you know the uh aspect of the reefer party <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. if, if that's your thing i don't i don't want to throw that under the bus but expand on making art um on your travels more i know that you've done a little bit yeah um it's just like i really i really love traveling in general i've gone to quite a few places and um i'm a very visual person visual learner so um being able to explore and adventure is definitely something that's really inspiring for me. So I always try to bring stuff with me when I go to those places because, um, you know, when, when the, you know, when the time hits, when my creative juices are flowing, I just got to make it. Um, so yeah, I don't really, I'm now, sorry, are, go you, ahead. are you familiar with like you know the Miami Art Basel LA's Art Basel and stuff? How they have like these Art Deco weekends where it's just like, in my point of view, I hate to say contemporary artists, but these various artists come out there and put out their artworks that are getting sold for actual you know decorative pieces that's going to be mm-hmm. in various places, uh, even all around the mm-hmm. world. Um, is that something that also like interests you as far as like getting your stuff into a market um, that is like more, I guess, uh, wider than the local thing too? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's definitely something that I'm always striving for. Um, it's like pretty difficult to uh, sell at least my kind of work here um, locally, um, not just because of like, you know, people have less money here, but, um, 
you know, the taste is a little different. I mean, there's definitely tons of people here that love my work. Um, but the market is just a little bit different. So I definitely, I'm always trying to, um, you know, make more connections and, uh, talk to other artists and figure out ways to get myself out there further. Um, because, you know, if I want to make this a full-time career forever, um, I'm going to have to, you know, ex expand my horizons and, uh, get shows other places. And I think one of those, another, another way to go about that, I think is trying to get into residencies. And that's another thing that's that like, you know, brings in traveling, um, and experiencing a place for, you know, a short period of time, like one to three months or whatever. Um, that's something that I really want to do. And I think that will help me, um, get into other places as well. I'd say that this statement alone kind of speaks for some of the fans or people that are familiar with your work, how it's kind of uh, evoking, um, you know, like a certain kind of response and a perception and also like interpretation as well as far as like even if you didn't get the title, you would still be trying to uh, tie in the different ways that it can relate to you. Um, and to bring to bring this up, uh, uh, you you recently featured some of your stuff at the Pretty House grand opening revive. I know that they had this old one back in the day that was really cool. Yeah. So kind yeah. of expand on how that came to be and like uh, the artworks and stuff that you had up. Um. So I knew um, Simon Kingston. I actually sent you some of his music. I listen to it pretty regularly. Um, so his mother, I, I had been friends with him. He unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. Um, and he, he's an amazing artist in in so many different ways. And I also, um, know his mother and she actually bought some work from me, um, about a year ago. And so, uh, I, I guess I've just been in her radar and I, you know, knew a lot of the people in the old pretty house and, so she had reached out to me um, and my friend Virgil Clark um, to be featured in that show because um, I think that she she knew I could bring some people out. I've curated my own shows and stuff before, so she knows I can bring a crowd. Um, and same with Virgil; he's very established in the area. So um, it was a really it was really successful. There was quite a few people, like maybe like three hundred to four hundred, that rolled through. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this new layout of um sharing the different artworks up and and um having that like i guess open to the community too um uh, that's also one thing mm -hmm. that I, I guess really shows that it's a little bit of a give back if you care it's it's one yeah. of those things right now in dayton it's uh only if you know about it uh for the most part there's a lot of these little hole in the walls so i guess once it you know don't want to shout out all these places that are really good because then you'll get a line and wish that uh you never <laughs> said it was too popular or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah i'll I bring up because i've noticed more and more this uh 24 7 donut place that runs literally 24 7 and does like donuts and coffee and like food and stuff 24 7 it's it's a mm -hmm. low-key gym uh for the date and vibe that only has so much to offer especially whenever you're a late night cat like myself i'm i'm always yeah. i'm always up uh late night and the nocturnal one and and i want to bring up uh like stuff stuff like in new york they have these hole in the wall galleries and little little like pop-up spots and moments where you know little djs will come or even like artists and bigger bands i would just like dj little sets and have people promote and show their their art even if it's only for a couple mm -hmm. of days or a weekend or a one-day thing and um mm -hmm. is that kind of one of those things where 
you look forward to and opportunities with with like creating art and having stuff that's just like yeah i can i can actually pack that up and and take it somewhere and try to sell it too um like do you mean like me going to new york and doing that sort of thing or like in dayton Um, it really just depends on the space. Um, I'm pretty particular about where I show my work and how I show it. Um, just because I've shown like, I've done a lot of like pop ups and stuff before or like art market things. And I feel like I've kind of like surpassed that and not in like a, like a, you know, bad way. It's just like, um, my stuff isn't necessarily something to like set up on a table or um, it makes me a little nervous sometimes, like, uh, depending on, like, what kind of crowd's going to come out and, like, what kind of environment it's going to be. Because um, I've run into instances where, like, people have, like, you know, knocked shit over or, like, bump stuff on the wall. And so, like, I'm a little, um, I'm a little bit more specific on where I want my stuff shown. Um, but I don't always write everything off. You know, I really do enjoy um doing like pop-up shows and stuff um I like curating my own too um like I had done one I was I'm sorry go ahead yeah terms and conditions at the capsule yeah so the capsule gallery um i'm a part of this group of people called floodcraft um and we like to get together and host shows and stuff it's just a group of some really talented people um that kind of came from you know all over the place and went to ud or you know or just from dayton um who are really passionate uh so uh luckily i had the opportunity to show it the capsule, which is um, like a shipping container sort of situation. Um, and yeah, that show was a lot of fun. And uh, like, again, with like, you know, um, being able to like work on pieces uh, like wood and various objects and stuff, it's uh, and kind of playing with the shapes and, and things that I have. It's kind of the same thing where like this is a shipping container and I kind of have to work with the space. Um and kind of figure out like a puzzle, how to make my stuff work in there. Um, it's a really fun, it's a really fun spot to show up. So go ahead and bring this right back to your artwork. Um, yeah. Some of the artists um, that have influenced you all throughout your time. Um, gosh, that changes a lot. Um, but some of them never go away necessarily. Um, it just, you know, I really love, I really love portrait painting. So I really love Kehinde Wiley. He was a really big inspiration for portrait painting for me. Um, with like the realism aspect and bringing in, you know, kind of a spin on his, on his people that he highlights. Um, and I really love the artist Sarah Lucas. I got to see one of her shows at the New Museum in New York a few, maybe four years ago or something. Um, and she uses, I mean, and it's the complete opposite, um, like, you know, Kande Wiley's just portrait oil paintings. And then Sarah Lucas is like very like gritty found object works. Um, she does everything from like collage to, you know, building these like huge concrete shoes or like throwing a bunch of eggs on a wall. And like, I really love her, um, you know kind of screw it mentality with like how she kind of makes stuff with whatever. Um, but then it all comes together in like this really beautiful poetic thing. Uh, so I can really relate to her work too uh, with like the grittiness and making that grit refined in some sort of way. Mm-hmm. 
Do I believe in what? <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. I don't know if I, you know, I believe in other beings or, you know, extended beings of ourselves. Um, Celestial beings, I feel like, exist maybe after death, but I have no proof. A lot of people, whenever they say, like, oh, your spirit navigator or spirit navigators, um, like, I thought this was a church group. Like, what's your, you know, spiritual <laughs> belief? And that's kind of where I'm like, okay, like, I will really bring you in with, like, a lot of different questions because I'm also questionable about, like, a lot of spirituality. I've, I've taken a big dive mm -hmm. on uh, various religions, um, and I think, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's really interesting to – tie this part i guess with like whenever you go and experience your your music your art and stuff and even with like films there's this ritualistic um thing that's happening where your mind i guess you know shuts out other things to allow this like one image or a few images or sounds and stuff to you know, take hold of what you're feeling and thinking. And I wonder if, like, in your artwork, are you kind of staying conscious of this? Or is this, like, part of, like, that that creative process of just, like, letting go and creating without, like, worrying, you know? Yeah. Um, it wasn't until a couple of years ago where I kind of quit worrying um, and just kind of leaned into my weirdness and whatever I'm making. Um, definitely like, you know, it kind of just like if I'm watching something or listening to something, like something will just click. It's never really like I'm going in with the intention of like, okay, I'm going to watch this uh, or listen to this and like derive inspiration. Unless it's something that like I've seen before or listened to on repeat or whatever. Cause I'll do that sometimes where I'll, I'll listen to the same song or same album on repeat for days um, if I'm painting, um, a specific painting or whatever, and, and it, and it made me kind of get into a really good flow state and put me into a good zone. Um, I'll just listen to that, listen to the same song hours and hours and hours. Um, but the, but the blue people bringing it back to the blue people, um, it's with that, it's kind of taken from an experience as opposed to like, a a sort of other being or an alien being of some sort. Um, circling back to when I was a swimmer, I had been in an open water swim meet, which is, I don't know if you know what that is or not, but you swim in a lake um, in a competition. And it was at Lake Erie. And gosh, I think it was July or June. This was years and years and years ago, but um, the water was freezing. And I remember getting out of the water after the race and my skin looked blue. And ever since then, like, you know, I feel like I, I never knew that I wanted to incorporate that because I wanted, like when I paint a lot of these things, I want anybody to be able to identify with it um, or anybody to try to find some sort of, um, you know, something in themselves so I try not to make it seem like any sort of specific person by making them blue. Now, this gets back to my favorite vibe osmosis question in general. You know, favorite movies, because I'm like a big movie guy. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, favorite movies in general or, like, favorite art movie? Okay. Um, I really love Wes Anderson films. <laughs> um, the soundtracks to them are, are really fun. Um, and I really love the colors and the weirdness of the people and the characters in them. Um, <laughs> yeah, so those are really good. Um, I really love Ratatouille. <laughs> um like, that kind of brings me, like, into the art field, though, because, you know, it's just, like, a fun, funky reminder that, you know, anyone can cook, anyone can make art. Um, so I really, I find a lot of inspiration. I really love that movie. <laughs> this 
is for uh, the Vibosnosers out there. Um, weed, sativa, indica, or the edibles? Do you prefer any? Um, I am not hard to please, so honestly, anything you can get my hands on. Um, but I really do. I'm loving the edibles. Loving the edibles right now. One of the things, like me and my partner, will be going in on uh, these gummies. But I guess if they're not the nerds kind, she doesn't like um, the like you know just like a uh, be like like almost like sour patch kidsy. But I swear they're they're the most like like once you eat one, I feel like you're definitely in for a trip. And like my friend will be like, Oh, we, we ate like six or seven of them and I'm like oh one or God. two will make me couch locked, ready to eat and like not do anything for the rest of my day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've got some sour patch kids right now and I usually just bite the head off and I'm good for a while. Yeah, like the best part. Um and, and I yeah. wanna get back to uh, so our films, like are you familiar with um Kenneth Anger? Like, uh, this guy, he started whenever he was, like, 15, 14, 16, and he, like, started making really deep films and, like, going places to make these films at such a young age that, like, to me, whenever I was younger and I first seen, um this one that he did with like Mick Jagger and the guy that wrote the satanic Bible. Um, mm -hmm. he, it was like almost music, music video esque, but, um, you're seeing like real people having like this kind of like ritualistic thing go on and like people like play music. And, um, mm -hmm. it, was, it was just one of those like pieces where I was like, okay, like I can also, um, like, do this because like i have like these ideas and visuals that i'd like to put out there and, and stuff like that did you ever kind of have that moment where you seen other artists where you were like oh i could maybe do something that's like that that other people can you know relate to in in my day um like with film or like the work that i make Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I always love to try, you know, to try to, you know, make make things similar to other people just because it's fun to learn that way. Um, but with I mean, with music, for instance, I'm not a, I'm not musically talented whatsoever. So I never think I never think in like the sound realm, but like visuals all across the board. Um, I love, I love taking photos and videos of things. Um, but I've never been much of like a filmmaker necessarily. Um, but I do, you know, I do think about like incorporating, you know, things like that quite often. Uh, it's just about having the, you know, the time or the, you know, timing really. It's all about timing. But no, I have never heard of, uh, Kenneth Edgar? What is anger. it? Anger. Yeah, Kenneth Anger. anger. Yeah, Kenneth yeah. Anger is one of those ones. Um, were you ever familiar with, like, I mean, outside of, like, Salvador Dali and, like, mm -hmm. the art world since uh, the films, the random films that he would get produced and, like, yeah. it, and the, the, just, like, the, the stuff that I seen whenever I was younger, I was, like, 14 15 like in you know junior high or so and like just kind of mm -hmm. like oh like this guy actually has like movies too like i, I yeah. remember like going to like a hollywood video one time and they even had salvador dali like a uh, little like collection tape and it just had like mm -hmm. little stuff and I, I remember like just like going home like, just, you know before you smoking weed or anything just going home and like just like whoa like this this stuff i've never um even thought about before like and it kind of like inspired me to also like okay like whenever i'm drawing and making stuff i can use other things than just ink I, in my mind before yeah. it's just like i didn't even think about like not using uh, the traditional ways of making art. Um, and, and I wondered like with that, with you, like, did you kind of go through a moment of like, okay, like I can use, you know, X, Y, and Z and start like opening up my palette per se. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Yeah, I, you know, it's funny that you mentioned Salvador Dali because he was actually a huge, huge inspiration for me when I was a kid, when I like knew nothing about art. He, he was the one that I was like, okay, Salvador Dali painting, Salvador Dali everything. Like, I, I love his work, his sculpture, his, his films. They're so fun. And he has a cookbook, actually, um, which I wanted to try to cook from. But there's some crazy stuff that I'm going to have to go to, like, Timbuktu to try to find these ingredients. Um, right, right. Um, yeah, so you're asking, like, was there a, a moment or a thing that kind of inspired me to span outside of just oil painting or? Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything necessarily, like, I'm trying to think. I guess just, like, going, going to museums, and I regularly listen to artist interviews, like, any, any artist interview that I can find on YouTube or whatever, like, I listen to it because it's, you know, when they talk about making art and, like, where they came from and, like, whether or not they went to school and they found success either way, you know, I think that that's always really inspiring and a good reminder to me that, like, you know, art can be kind of anything you want it to be. Um, and you can just, like, let go and let your mind run. And, like, so I guess me collecting these little things, you know, I, I used to just make, like, magnets <laughs> out of out of junk just because it was fun. And I would find these little objects or whatever out of state sales and things and make magnets from them. But then from there, I was like, oh, okay, like, I'm just going to, like, put this thing on that thing because I have it here and I, and I need to use it. It needs to be used for something. So I guess that's where it kind of came from was just, you know, listening to artist interviews and experiencing art and, and then just having the stuff, I guess. I'd, I'd also like to bring up, um, like, in, in your work, whenever you're doing shows, do you kind of try and tie a theme? Or does it kind of happen later in the in the development process? I just kind of wondered if uh, you ever go in um, with, like, a with like a message in mind for any, like, particular um, artwork um, and that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes, yeah, it's more of like a, okay, a show's coming up, uh, what do I have that's ready, and what can, what looks good together, um, and what, you know, I usually tend to go to my friends a lot for like, hey, like, what do you guys think, like, this should be about, I have all these things here, um, what are you getting from it? So I really like to hear, like, you know, what other people's experiences from, from being my art, I don't always like to... Um, give people a straightforward thing. I don't always know how to explain what I'm making. Um, so I guess, you know, I would say like half and half where like I know what I'm doing or it kind of just happens. Um, are you, I, don't, are I you try like, not to put too much pressure on it. Are you like a fan of uh, like these cartoon shows or, or were you ever a fan? Like I was wondering what, what like animated cartoon character from a show that you most I like identify with that you relate to? Finn the human. Also, why? Um, I don't think I'll ever let go of my childlike sense of wonder. Like that's just something that's so big inside of me that you know I really admire about him as a as a character um and just like adventures and like having a you know try to have a positive attitude and a positive outlook in any situation you know I try to pull positivity from anything that you know it's there obviously there's situations where they're they're really horrible and you know being positive isn't realistic but I try to have a really good outlook and you know just always spread kindness so I think that he's the best now this one I feel like is right at home for me. Um, some of like the besides like the music that you've sent me that you do relate to, I guess we'll go ahead and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go ahead and ask you um, the the what is it about me track? Um, what about that do you relate with? About what? I'm sorry. About me track. Like, what, what about it relates to 
Oh. Well, I was basically going to ask you about these songs on how they relate to you. Um, so if you could go ahead and expand. Yeah. Um, so I just like kind of came across her, you know, randomly. And I just really love like a strong voice and a strong feminine voice. And oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I just love like her range. You know, she's new to me. I honestly can't even remember her name off the top of my head right now, but it was just like, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. I just love her voice and like, it really like makes something inside me like boil in a good way. Um, so yeah. And so like her, her voice kind of reminds me a little bit of like, uh, have you ever heard of hiatus coyote? Yeah. Like, like the singer in there, like her voice is just like, insane uh so this yeah. ties back with uh some of your favorite musicians artists um and like albums songs uh so go ahead and go ahead and list what comes to the dome um i really love nico from the velvet underground um i love the velvet underground but like her stuff as an individual is like if i were to if i were to put like one artist who you know I will always come back to always identify with is her and it's like you know people kind of like look at me funny when I say that because her stuff is very dark a lot and um you know yeah very avant-garde um yeah but also like very you know I don't know yeah very vulnerable Her 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 point in uh, Velvet Underground so much mm -hmm. fitting into the pockets that was elevating the music and also whenever you mm -hmm. get her own music you you might as well wish that she wrote majority of the Velvet Underground songs other than about like being lazy and high no offense <laughs> Lou Reed yeah. Poor Lou. Yeah, I, I guess uh, I, I guess in Lou Reed's case, like I'm a fan of, but I can see um this this kind of out um pressure, like outside pressure, and also um being like this you know white privileged person and like what that really looks mm -hmm. like on the industry. I think he was fully aware of w what it was going on in his circle. Um, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's one thing I guess I appreciate. And, and as far as like making these like weird collaborations and not being like, um, you know, opposed to telling, I guess the truth and especially about like his own queer, um, that, like, a like aspects, I guess, of, mm -hmm. um, relations and everything. And, uh, I don't know, there's, there's definitely some, some, some artists out there. I feel like whenever I was younger, truly did um express to me it's okay to be who you are wherever you are prince for mm -hmm. for one thing andy warhol uh without a mm -hmm. doubt i guess really showed me that it didn't matter like what you're into as long as like you're authentic um go for it yeah i mean if you're if you're gonna like be as true as you can be it doesn't matter how weird you are you're you, can, you know you you're super confident in yourself whatever like people are gonna eventually get it you know i feel like uh and then love it they learn to love it yeah and, and also like younger did you kind of feel like this pushback on like your interest and in, and in art and how you kind of knew about these other avenues but this this was a thing for you did you kind of experience that um sort of rejection about uh trying to pursue i guess what you want Absolutely. I didn't really grow up. I mean, like I said, my, my great grandmother was an artist, but, uh, she, you know, I've been without her longer than I was with her. Um, and you know, 
other than other than that, I didn't really grow up around too many artists. Like my aunt's a graphic designer, and that's great. Um, but that you know that wasn't really my realm. So I was kind of told for a long time that like, okay, you need to find a real job. You know, you need to go to college and and try to find something that's real, a real thing. Um, and it wasn't until a couple of years ago that um, my family was like, oh, okay, like this is what you're doing. Uh, this is great. And I got a lot more support that way, but it was kind of like a, you know, they grew up in a different time or whatever, and they didn't grow up in that community. So it was kind of hard for them to understand. And so it was hard for me to get the support that I needed. Um, until now, I mean, I, I'm supported now, you know, they, they totally believe in me. Um, but it was definitely difficult because, you know, I was, but although, although I had all those pressures and stuff, like I was still very hard headed and like still believed that like, okay, this is the thing that I'm going to do. Like, I guess I'll try to dabble and think of other things that I want to do, but that's, you know, ultimately I knew that like, okay, I don't, this is the thing that I'm most passionate about. Like when I, I went to Sinclair Community College um, and got an associate of art um, just to, you know, make my mom happy, honestly. And uh, try to learn a little bit more discipline for myself. But even there, like, I didn't really like people telling me what to do. And um, anything other than art classes, you know, was was difficult. So I would just stay there really late nights. And I'm like, this is this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what I have to do. No, I, I, I tell you, uh, I dropped out and like, uh, I don't work um, at all besides like work on art and music for the most part i guess i guess i work really hard on trying not to have a job right now uh, i guess that's the, <laughs> like that's the vibe i'm 26 years old so i'm just like at this point everybody knows i've been doing this for this long whenever i was younger every time i like, might have my friends come over and play like piano with me and like i'd jam and do stuff you know we'd have our high school buddies they'd just be like I get what you guys are doing, but that's just gay. You know, that was just like that oh that that Ohio Midwest like impression on shutting down, I guess like whatever was kind mm-hmm. of weirder, different, um also like soft, like like why are you playing piano and you got a guy on guitar, uh or mm-hmm. weird effects and stuff. So I, I feel like there's always kind of like that whiplash on um like whenever art is weird at first and then you see like that that uh that person develop and um still i guess keep with it if that's like their thing uh, other people they hang it up on the towel uh that's for sure yeah i'm definitely not going to let anybody tell me you know that i can't do something or you know that my that my weirdness within my art making is you know going to inhibit me from anything you know i was I was always very rebellious in that regard where like, you know, even though I was kind of a little bit of an outsider in high school and, you know, people definitely thought I was weird. And even now, you know, a lot of people think my artwork is weird, but they like, you know, they, they get it more. They're like, Oh, okay. How do you even like come up with that or whatever? But like in high school, for instance, like, you know, people thought I was super weird, but then they would pick me in a project to like, you know, oh, you'll do the art portion and like, we'll do all the other stuff. Like, that's what you're good at. So I was like, okay, sounds good to me. I'll take it. I'll take, oh, yeah, I'll take any job I can get at this point. Um, yeah. to, to tie this back to your artwork, one of, one of my all time favorite pieces, I guess, whenever I was first like taking the dive on uh, some of, some of your artwork, um, the Dayton mm-hmm. Urban Gardener, the oil on yeah. canvas. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. how, how did, how did this guy become a thing? Because, uh, you know, you have this love and hate re- relationship with Dayton as far as like, it's in the revival, but there's still this pushback as far as like so much things being more open. Um, mm-hmm. so like, how, how did you get about this, this, uh, urban gardener character? Um, so that's, so, um, the red rocks in the scene is actually a photo that I took while traveling across country, uh, with a friend of mine. Um, and she was, she actually worked for this gardening company called Dayton urban gardeners. And, um, 
I, I got a lot of inspiration from her, like sending me photos of like weird things that she would find in trees and like, um, you know, she would, she would come home with muddy shoes on and walk all over the, the kitchen floor and muddy it up. And so I put our, our kitchen tile on there and I just, it's all things that I find like intriguing and humorous. And, um, so I kind of, I pulled the original image from this, um, magazine from the late 1800s called gallery of players and it kind of circles back to like the circus idea um and bringing like um that femininity and masculine roles um in in a time where like you know that was considered avant-garde or like frowned upon even um so i thought it was really cool that um you know i have this like feminine figure holding a sword as this character with a mask on um, in a space that's totally not real, but it is at the same time. Um, So it's just kind of like, you know, again, pulling from things that I've experienced and things that I like and things that I find funny um, and kind of hodgepodging it all together um, into um a feeling of a person um so i have her you know i I took a photo of her uh we were swimming in a creek one time in costa rica and and we went on a hike with these rain boots on and so i i included those and i included um like these these little yellow gulls and um you know i really like including aspects of nature in my work too and, and little snippets um so yeah other than that i mean it's also huge it's like nine feet tall <laughs> that is, i guess that might also be one of my favorite aspects I, i'm one of my like all-time favorite artists um i'll go and throw this out there basquiat um i mm-hmm. had i had no idea um like it took me until maybe 19 20 years old um to find out that um that that artist that i liked from those time periods that i didn't ever take the time to like learn about um Mm -hmm. was like you know facing racism discrimination segregation Mm -hmm. um inflation Mm -hmm. um and like you know so many things but still managed to live in the moment to make the best out of like the artwork that he created you know getting high of Mm -hmm. course i feel like sex drugs and rock and roll is its own thing with with like with art in general but like the kind of content and stuff that he was creating and then found a way to still make that uh, established even as like all the odds are against you per se uh that to me like i would whenever i was like later on found that out i was just like really inspired on like okay like you can keep with it even if you're struggling with like mental illness or whatever like you can still tap into like i guess what you need to for your art um even if it's like a moment um and and a small period of time because i guess like that you know Was, yeah, I, was... I think like, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, you cut out for a second. Yeah. Um, I guess, like, the way I look at it, especially with, like, somebody like Basquiat, um, it's, like, you know, a lot of people, such as myself, um, like, use making art and painting as a way to process information. Um, And I feel like, you know, that's a need, you know, like a therapy or a meditation. Um, And I think, like, Basquiat, in my opinion, I think that's something that he needed in order to process information and his experiences. So like, I can really relate to that as well. I mean, not, not, and you know, not the same as him, obviously we're two different people and we have entirely different experiences, but um, like with my work, for instance, like I, I'm definitely like making things and processing information, whether it's bad or good or 
you know, just trying to figure stuff out. Um, it's a, it's a meditation. I guess uh, this this kind of ties up. Before the before, I thank you for for joining Vibos Versus and taking this much time. Um, before I get to the last question, um, do you, like in in my own, I guess like a uh, spiritual battle, the idea of like internal forgiveness. Um, do you think mm -hmm. like do you think do you have like your own spiritual belief or do you kind of like feel like uh, it's a karma kind of thing, a reincarnation kind of thing? Uh, what's your kind of perception on, um, I guess, like these learning experiences of whenever you could have done better, whatever? Yeah, um, I definitely um, believe in some sort of karma and I definitely believe in reincarnation because you know, I don't, I don't, there's so much energy within us. Um, but, and, and that energy, you know, where, where could it go? Where else could it go? You know, and, you know, things are constantly cycling through all the time. Um, so whether it's real or not, you know, I, I think it's a really lovely thing to believe in. Um, but, you know, other, other than that, I definitely think that like, just, um, you know, putting kindness out to the world, I would say, is my spirituality, just kindness and understanding. Um, and it's a practice. It's not, you know, you know, nobody is just necessarily that way. Um, it's always this push and pull of like, OK, like, you know, uh, you always have to kind of remind yourself for me, for instance, OK, patience, kindness, um, you know, just just giving love. And in my experience, like I'm, like I love to, you know, make music, create music, or produce, or mix and DJ and that kind of stuff. And I, I see that as like my version of contemporary, um, cognitive kind of therapy per se. But do you mm -hmm. kind of ever, you know, besides the therapeutic aspect of like creating and making your your art, do you find like the cognitive reasons behind like drawing and painting and stuff, um, like in in the message of the art, or like you also feel like as you're doing that, like releasing, I guess, the things that you need to. Um. Yeah. Um, so like you're wanting to know if like the things that I'm creating have messages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, sometimes it just varies. Yes. Um, I definitely, like, there are definitely works, like, I have a, a huge painting that I'm sitting in front of right now um, that, you know, is definitely going to change a lot more, but there was a lot of, um, a lot of anger within it. Um, it was kind of like the beginning of, like, a Roe v. Wade situation, but, you know, the more I look at it, the more I want to change it because, you know, I don't, I don't want to, like, look at this painting and, and look at the, look at the hate, so it's also part of like um you know um like i had said about like the processing of information um yeah so sometimes uh, sometimes for, it's a little bit more intentional for me personally i think like i i'm a person that likes to try and live in the moment or indulge the moment as much as possible um i reflect mm -hmm. a little bit um i like i mean i try to reflect a lot but i mean i feel like whenever it's done and said the processing i'm only reflecting so much um i try now to take the time to reflect like like plan to reflect like way later on and like not have like that pressure of like what what am i doing is it right or wrong like what kind of direction am i going mm -hmm. in life and i and i only see that as like uh protectors i guess in my own realm i guess uh as far as like 
proceeding to let music and art still happen other than like okay like i made this one really good thing and like i don't need to make any any more good things because like i can't be known for that like one statement per se you you know mm-hmm. what i mean uh there, there's artists out there that have like you know put out only one record even though they've been a band for you know 40 years now at this point and uh, that to me is like okay you must have been really comfortable behind like that one album that one statement and know like what you're doing as artists is still like i don't know and thrived in in that Mm -hmm. or still like on a progressing and living on um now now uh to my last question on vibe osmosis thank you for taking this this much time um if you were stranded on an island and you could only bring one thing with you, what would you bring? Oh, God. Hmm. That's tricky. And it usually changes. <laughs> um, probably a radio. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, I've been really like a crank one because I probably can't bring batteries right yeah a crank a crank or they radio won't last forever that's, that's picking up whatever you can you're, you're cool with like yeah bad madonna getting on the radio or something or you don't mind uh the random bad music that hits it <laughs> i mean whatever whatever it is if i mean i have if i have one thing to bring you know i like i love i love people and i love listening to people and you know if i could listen to NPR <laughs> and listen to people's stories and just to hear the world happen in some sort of capacity. Um, I would probably feel less alone on that Island. Uh, I know I'd be slightly disappointed if it didn't pick up like NPR or WYSO or something. I'd be like, Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that would, I mean, in an ideal world, those are the radio stations I would be getting. Okay, so thank you for joining Vibe Osmosis. Go ahead and uh, shout out anything you'd like to shout out, anybody you'd like to mention. Um, I, I really appreciate you taking this time. Cool. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I'd like to shout out my art group, Floodcraft. Love you guys. Hog House. Um, and my partner, Kyle Teeley. Um, he's a really talented artist as well and a filmmaker. And him and his brothers just finished a feature length film. So very excited about that. Shout out to that film. <laughs> now, all right. All right. So thank you for joining Vibe Osmosis. I'll keep in touch with uh, the episode details and everything like that. Anything you'd like to uh, send for the show before today, go ahead and hook me up. I appreciate it. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Thank you.